Hi, I'm Teacher Thomas. Welcome to math class. Today's topic is quadratic substitution. We're going to solve the given equation 2 times 4 to the power of x minus 3 times 2 to the power of x minus 9 equals 0. We'll use the same methodology we use in factoring quadratic equations. Let's begin by looking at common scenarios of quadratic-like equations that you need to be able to identify and solve. We'll talk about our example in a moment, but let's look at a typical quadratic equation. We have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Our variable is x, and we see that there is that variable squared somewhere else in the equation, and there's a constant in the equation. Let's look at other scenarios that are similar. We might have as our middle term b times the square root of x. Here our variable is the square root of x. Then a will be the coefficient of the square root of x squared, which would be x. And we would have a constant of c equals 0. So ax plus b square root of x plus c equals 0 is a quadratic-like equation. You can use quadratic methodology to solve this equation. Let's look at a second example. Let's take a middle term of b times e to the power of x. Here the variable working with is e to the power of x. If we have e to the power of x squared, the result is e to the power of 2x, and our quadratic-like function is a times e to the power of 2x plus b times e to the power of x plus c equals 0. Now let's look at our example. In the second term, we have the variable, or we have the term 2 to the power of x. We're going to use this as our variable. In a moment, we're going to substitute in for 2 to the power of x a variable. First, let's see the relationship between 2 to the power of x and 4 to the power of x. If we take 2 to the power of x squared, we get 4 to the power of x. So here again we have a quadratic-like equation looking at the term 2 to the power of x as the variable. So now let's use substitution, and we're going to temporarily change 2 to the power of x to y. And then when we come back, we need to, when we finish with working with the variable y, we need to resubstitute and solve for x. So I will now have, let's look at the middle term first. 3 times 2 to the power of x becomes 3 times y minus 9 equals 0. My first term is 2 times what? We've identified 4 to the power of x as equal to 2 to the power of x squared, and we're substituting y for 2 to the power of x, so this is 2y squared. Now we're working with the quadratic, 2y squared minus 3y minus 9 equals 0, which we can factor into the terms starting with 2y and y, observing that my second sign is negative, which means I need one positive and one negative. Since the beginning terms aren't the same, one is 2y, one is y, I need to plan out how I'm going to put all of these terms in. I know that I can factor 9 into 3 and 3, so I will use 3 and 3 as the last term of each of these multiplied terms. I could also factor 9 as 9 and 1. That's not going to work in this scenario, however. My middle term is minus 3y, so I'll put the minus with the 3 in the second factor. I'll put the plus with the 3 in the first factor. And now if I were to go backwards and multiply 3 times y, I'd have positive 3y, 2 times 2y times negative 3, I'd have negative 6y, those combine to negative 3y, that's the term in the middle of the left side of my equation. 
2y times y would give me my y squared, and 3 times negative 3 would give me my negative 9. Let's find our solutions for y. y equals negative 3 over 2 would make the first factor equal 0. y equals 3 would make the second factor equal 0. We're not solving for y. y is simply a substitution variable to make the algebra easier. Let's now go back and re-substitute, replacing y with 2 to the power of x. Our original substitution was y replacing 2 to the power of x. Now we're resubbing back to 2 to the power of x equals negative 3 over 2 and 2 to the power of x equals 3. In the first case, there is no solution. There is no value for x that would result in a negative value. For the second answer, 2 to the power of x equals 3, here we can use logarithms. Log base 2 for the argument 3 equals x. This is the exact value of x. If we want a decimal approximation, then x is approximately 1.58. In our example, we have one solution for x. It is possible that this quadratic would have produced two solutions for x. It's also possible that the result could have been repeated roots. It's also possible that there could be zero solutions for x. So do keep in mind, just like with the regular quadratic, here in working with quadratic substitution, you could end up with two, one, or zero solutions. This completes the requirements for our given problem and this completes the lesson on quadratic substitution.